I brought my firebox freestyle out with me today so I could use it to make my lunch, but I'm going to be using it with wood pellets. If you're interested in seeing how I do that, keep watching. So the Firebox Freestyle is designed primarily for use with wood, and it does that very effectively, very efficient. I have a number of videos demonstrating exactly that. But of course, I like to see if I can get more from my wood stoves. I like to see if I can get some versatility in terms of using it with alcohol, with wood pellets, and with charcoal. Well, today we're going to do it with wood pellets. Now, airflow is important to using wood pellets in a wood stove, and the Freestyle has lots of airflow. In fact, so much so, so through that open fire grate that it won't support wood pellets and they'll fall through. So we have to come up with a way of modifying or at least adapting the freestyle to hold all of the pellets without falling through yet maintain as much airflow as you can. So that's what I've done. I'm going to take you down to the stump top. I'm going to show you a couple of different methods that I've used for using the stove with uh, wood pellets and we'll talk about a few others. All right, before we get started, just a few things I want to mention. To begin, there is no one way, there is no best way, there are in fact multiple ways you can accomplish the same thing. It's just a matter of understanding what the principle is that you're trying to uh, work around to make this work. So to begin, a couple things that is worth knowing. One is that wood pellets, at least the one I purchased here, the hardwood pellets are six, milli six millimeters in diameter on average. So if you can find some type of a plate or insert that has holes six millimeters or smaller, then of course you're, you're going to be good at holding the wood pellets in place. Now you can use a plate or something that has holes larger than six millimeters. They will still work to a degree. Some, at some point you're, they're going to fall through. But when you have holes larger than six millimeters, throw your pellets in, they will clump up and a lot of them will stay and very few of them will fall through. That will work. That's true. However, what I have found through experience is that as the wood pellets burn, and turn to coals and then ash, they start to fall through progressively faster through those larger holes. So the thing, and that's not a, you know, the end of the world. It's not a bad thing because of course it's all being caught by your ash pan. The thing is, is you're losing wood pellet or wood coals that you could be using for cooking. So you want to retain as many of the hot coals inside the stove without having them drop through. So that's principle number one, something with small diameter holes in it. Principle number two is still try to maximize the amount of airflow coming through. So if you can get holes to uh, filled in portions in a ratio of 50 percent or higher for the hole, so more airflow than solid, uh, then you're going to have more efficient burn. So let's start with the simplest, the most expedient, and probably the least durable method, which is using, using aluminum foil. Aluminum foil that you would buy or use for baking or cooking or whatever. You can use that. Cut a piece, maybe fold it over a couple of times to the size that fit will fit inside of the stove, and just poke holes in it, a lot of holes. It will work to hold the pellets, it'll work to supply the airflow, but the heat will pretty much disintegrate the foil, maybe maybe two uses, but I probably only one. In fact, I don't think I would use it a second time around. Now you could upgrade and go to a foil pan, like you might uh, a disposable pie pan or the oven liner type pans, and you will get maybe two or three uses. You could even go up to aluminum flashing and with a paper punch, punch a bunch of holes in it, and that will work as well. I've experimented with a few of those things. I was just looking for something more durable than that. So by all means, experiment with that. You'll get an idea of what works, and then you could look for something a little bit more durable. So I came up with two things, and they are probably at the extremes of... Uh, what you can find and use. You can see that this is a piece of mesh stainless steel and I went to our uh, thrift store and looked around until I found a strainer, the kind you might hold over a bowl to pour stuff through and keep the, the solids inside. I took it off of the rim and flattened it out and then cut a square rectangle, whatever, of the mesh. It does move in different directions, which is kind of nice. And the holes are very fine. It holds all the pellets and still has maximum airflow. So this works pretty good. It's very lightweight, quite durable. The only thing I've noticed about it is the raw edges catch on things. So they, they poke my fingers, they catch on the little cotton stuff sack that I carry the stove in at times. So it works very, very well, but it's not the best. 
The other thing I came up with was a barbecue grill, the type that you might use for vegetables on top of your gas barbecue at home. And there's a couple of different ones around, and this is the one I found that had the smallest holes. So I just traced the fire grate from the firebox stove on it, and, and then cut it with an angle grinder. More work for sure, absolutely more work. And then just smoothed it off with some sandpaper and some stones and that type of thing. But this is a much more durable, albeit much heavier thing to be carrying around. I guess it depends on how many times you can see yourself using wood pellets if you wanna go through the work to make one of these things. This is what I'm going to use today. Uh, I have used this one a few times, and as you can see, it's standing up, and I know that it works. It, uh, it's obvious that it will work. I just want to demonstrate using this one today. All right, so setting the firebox stove up for this. So there's two things you can do. If I was using the mesh or I was using aluminum foil, then I would for sure keep the grate inside of the stove because you need something to support the weight of the pellets. Using this plate, I can sub out that plate and take it out completely and just put this one in, which is what I'll do and I'll demonstrate. So there's a couple things you need to do. First off, it's obvious that if you leave the, the grate in the lowest position, your pellets are gonna pour out the three feed ports around the outside. So we're gonna to have to lift our grate up to just above these feed ports so we don't lose pellets out. And that's easy enough to do, so let's do that first. Pull out my two fire sticks, pop out the grate. Now, I'm going to show you as best I can where I have found it uh, is the best spot. You'll notice that these are the trying to see if it shows in the sun. These are the holes that you usually put your fire sticks through to support the fire grate. If you move up on the outside, there are holes or slots, we'll say, all the way down the sides, and they're even all the way. The second slot up from here is the one that I use. Put the other one in. All right, so now when I drop this plate in, and remember, I'm going to replace the fire grate with this. Find the right way to put this in. Oops. There, okay, so you can see that I have this, my modified grate or my whole grate with holes in it. I call it my pellet grate for, for short. In at that height. You can see on the sides that it's, if you go any lower, you're gonna lose pellets out, but this still keeps, will keep the pellets in. And basically, that's all there is to it. Now I'm ready to set it up with wood pellets and get a fire going in it and cook my lunch. So let's do that next. So I do have the freestyle set up in my fire pit here because of course, as I started to record this video, the wind started to pick up and it was just gonna be a little bit more windy than I wanted to do this with. So here we are in the fire pit, not so much for safety, just for wind protection. So once again, now you can see the freestyle with that pellet plate inside, sitting inside its ash pan. And let's take, we have one cup of hardwood pellets here. I'll pour those in directly. And a few, yeah, what, three little tiny pieces did fall through. So it's not perfect, but you know, that's, that's very much on the acceptable side of things. I'm going to put, use, hand sanitizer. We seem to have a lot of hand sanitizer around the house right now. So I'll put in some hand sanitizer, a couple of ounces, kind of let it sit down inside, give it a light. And it's lit, I think. Yep, it's lit. Can her, can't see it during the daylight, right? So, uh, yep, that's all there is to getting wood pellets to go. So I am going to start watching my watch right now so that I can give you an idea how long these burn but there's not going to be much to see for a few minutes until the wood pellets really start to get engaged. What I'll do then is I'll bring it back I'll show you what it looks like with the wood pellets burning inside and then I've got a pot of water ready to go on top that I'll be using to make my lunch but I will also want to demonstrate the effect it has of putting a pot on top. So yeah I'll bring it back in a few minutes when the pellets are well engaged. So I waited, what is it? Uh, yeah, just 10 minutes before I turn the camera back 
back on. I could have easily put my pot of water back onto these flames a lot sooner than this, but to be honest, there's much more fuel here than I need to cook my lunch with, but so I just waited till they, they were well engaged so I give you an idea of what it looks like. You can see secondary combustion taking place all around the outside. Now, it's not pyrolysis, so it's not a wood gas stove, but it is secondary combustion as air is being drawn in through the holes all around the sides of the firebox, freestyle. So what I'll do now is I'll reposition the camera so you can get a better look at how this operates when I put a pot of water on. All right, just one thing I want to mention before I demonstrate putting the pot of water on top of the stove is that I'm looking inside the stove to give you uh, an idea of how deep the pellets are sitting. And they're about two and a half, maybe three inches from the very top. Now, I don't know that there's a hard and fast rule for the best way of doing this, but what my experience tells me is there is a sweet spot between the pellets being too far away from the bottom of your pot and too close. Too close, what I find is that it, the dampening effect is, effect of the pot, as you'll see in a moment, sometimes can cause airflow to, it doesn't smother them, but at least slows them down and causes a bit of smoke. Of course, if the pellets are too far down in your stove, then the heat is being wasted as it rises. You don't get all the heat that you would with pellets a little bit closer. So I think I've achieved the sweet spot here. Now, because pellets need a lot of airflow, I have the, the uh, damper open on the side. And uh, yeah, now I think, yeah, you'll probably see a, at least a, this will happen a couple of times. It doesn't seem to matter what stove that you use wood pellets in. If it gets a downdraft, it's going to puff smoke out through the bottom. But otherwise, you can see how clean is that? Very, very clean burning. All right, let's make sure the bottom of my pot is clean as well. Let's put that on. I'm using the Uberlieben Titanium Kessel, which is just, I think, pretty much the perfect size for use on top of this wood stove. Very little smoke. Some of that is just burning off the stuff that's on the bottom of the pot right now, but you can see flames escaping out from where the damper is. That's why I put the handle on the far side, just so that uh, it didn't get so warm I couldn't handle it, of course. So that's exactly what you hope to see. Very little smoke being caused by the dampening effect and uh, just a lot of efficient heat and flame as it's producing. Now, I will tell you, it's going to come out in another video. I am making a soup slash stew with this. That's a lot of heat, to be honest, for simmering, too much heat for simmering. What I'm hoping to do right now is use the majority of this heat to uh, bring the water to a boil so I can add dry ingredients to it. And by that time, the wood pellets should start to slow down in their combustion. I'll end up with a lot of good coals in there, which should give me the simmering that I'm looking for only a few minutes after that anyway. It doesn't need to simmer all that long. So there's not a lot to see now until I have completed cooking my lunch. I will show you what it looks like once the pellets are all burnt out, just so you can see how much residue is left behind. And uh, then we'll uh, close up with a few thoughts. So here's what's left after uh, just 50 minutes, actually. Yeah, 50 minutes is just a little white ash and a few little bits of pellets left, more like coals. So there's actually a little bit of heat in there still. Not enough that I can use for anything, but still just a little bit of heat. So I just wanted to show you that before we close this video up with a few more comments. All right, a few comments about using the Firebox Freestyle with wood pellets. So I did say I'd keep a track of the time. So I got 20 minutes of active flames from that two cups of wood pellets. I then got another almost 20 minutes of usable heat. And what I mean by usable heat is I made a soup or stew and it actually simmered for another 20 minutes. So they would have been good grilling coals had you wanted to put on a hamburger or a steak or anything else. Not a lot of time, but enough time to cook something so I would say 40 minutes of usable heat both flame and active coals is not bad from two cups of wood pellets uh, yeah so it did retain heat for a little while after that but as you saw I showed you what it looked like as it was going cold there was still a tiny bit of heat but I could pick the stove up with my hand so I wouldn't call it usable heat by any means so I would say 40 minutes of usable heat from two cups of wood pellets. Not too bad at all. So a couple of things. Could I have used three cups of wood pellets? Because I've had, people have asked, is there an upper limit on what you can use in a stove like this or any other stove? My experience has been that 
one to two cups is almost ideal, depending on what you're looking to do with it, of course. When you start going over two cups, now depending on the size of the stove, but as you get thicker and thicker or deeper in the amount of pellets, you don't get as much airflow coming up through the pellets. So it gets to a point where their airflow is restricted and the pellets don't burn well, at least until they start to go down past that point where airflow is increased. So my recommendation is for a stove of this size, which is four inches across, two cups of wood pellets is as, as much as you want to use in it. As I mentioned, you can always add wood to it later on if you want to and uh, get more extended burn time out of it that way. So that's just a couple thoughts on using wood pellets in this. It does occur to me, had I put the original fire grate in the original position at the bottom, and cut myself a larger piece of that stainless steel mesh that I could have pushed it in and had it cup up like this from the bottom and that would have occluded or at least covered the holes so that pellets wouldn't flow out. I would have gotten maybe a little bit more pellets in it. It's worth experimenting with if you're interested, something to give a try with. Um, so can you scale this up for use with the six-sided or the eight-sided configurations that you can make out of two of the freestyles? I have not tried that. My intuition tells me it would not work well. You would use up a lot of pellets unnecessarily. For me, pellets go for something this small. Now, I may try that. If I do try that and I find it to be a success, I'll come back and demonstrate it. But as I mentioned, my experience in using wood pellets in large stoves that are wide in diameter doesn't work as well as it does in smaller stoves like this one. So, you know, if you've tried it and you've got any experience with that, by all means, let me know. So I have demonstrated using this stove with wood and wood pellets, and I believe with alcohol. If not, it'll, it'll appear in at least one of my videos. I haven't used it with charcoal yet. Now, Charcoal is something I would use in either the six or eight sided configurations. I know Steve demonstrates doing that. Charcoal is a wonderful material for doing baking and grilling over. I know people would ask, why would you want to bring charcoal into the woods? Well, we're in fire ban season here. Now today I'm good. The province had enough rain that the fire ban is not on, but I know it's going to be over the summer. So I turn to charcoal because we are permitted in Nova Scotia to use charcoal in an appliance like a stove when the fire ban is on. So that's why I tend to use a lot of charcoal during the summer. So I'll come back and I'll demonstrate using the firebox freestyle in the six sided, maybe in the eight sided configuration using charcoal to do some grilling and cooking with. Okay, I think I've gone on enough. There may be things I've missed that you want to point out to me. If you do or you have any questions, then please put them in the comments section below. If you have any other suggestions for things I could do with the Firebox Freestyle or anything else for that matter, put those all in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.